This one is, um, I'm going to entitle it, Nothing Good Ever Comes Easy. Right? What's good? The kingdom. Right? You know, scriptures talk about, you know, we seek, uh, here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come, and that's the kingdom of the Most High. Right? Um, because a mark of 2 and 10. Right? Uh, arise and depart for this is not your rest. This place isn't our rest. We don't want anything to do with this, um, you know, this filthy, wicked kingdom. Right? Uh, for example, you know, I was just visiting my grandmother and then he had a popular English television show on called uh, EastEnders, right? And all that you're seeing, you know, making light of, you know, being homosexuals. He had like, what, uh, three homosexual characters in that shit, man, right? All in one episode, right? You know, he had a little child uh, 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 asking, oh, hump, what's a gay icon? What's a gay icon, Right? You know, uh, the child's father was a homosexual and all of that. Then you had, you know, these two uh, women. One was quote-unquote heterosexual, and then, but the other one was, was gay. And it's just madness, man. It's just, you watch this shit and, it, it, you know, it makes your blood boil. You know, but that's besides the point. You know, just an example of why we want this place to go, right? But, yeah, nothing good ever comes easy. And that good is the kingdom of the most high, so I'll get some scriptures. It says Acts fourteen twenty two says confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, right, enter into the kingdom of the most high, right. So, you know, for us to be, uh, uh, for us to get into the kingdom, right, we must go through tribulation, right. You read about uh, in Second Ezra, uh, 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 the second chapter. No, Sirach, the second chapter about preparing your soul for temptation, right? About how gold is tried in the fire and accept all men in the furnace for adversity, right? You know, because we're, we, we're of the world and the scriptures speak about how we have to be renewed day by day, right? So that we're worthy to enter into the kingdom. And that is the tribulation that we have to go through, right? It's just part and parcel of the job, right? This is Second Thessalonians, oh, and I, if I, if, you know, on the flip side, I do have to say, ultimately, it is easy, right? And that is the beautiful thing, because, like, you know, which sounds like a contradiction, but, in, and, you know, I'll get the scripture, which proves that it's not a contradiction, right? But, you know, in the flesh, you know, you will we'll have to go through things, right? Yeah, you'll be, you know, on, on this side, you know, in, in these weak fleshly bodies, right, we'll think it's like, ah. Oh, you know, it's so difficult, but when we're in the kingdom, we're going to look back and be like, is that it? Right? It's the second Thessalonians 1 and 4, so, so that we ourselves glory in you and the churches of the Most High for your patience and faith and all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. Right? So this is, once again, reiterating the point about the persecutions and the tribulations that, you know, a man of the Lord is going to go through. Right? These are things that make you grow spiritually. Right, these are the things that um, you know, improve, uh, 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 and get you on another level, right? Which is a good thing to ask. You know, be pray to the Lord. Hey, you know, let me go through more things. Let me go through more um, uh, uh, what do you call it, more uh, trials, right? Because hey, the scriptures speak about you know whom the Lord doesn't love, right? He doesn't chasten, right? So if if the Lord loves you, you go and go through some stuff. Right, this is uh, next next precept. This is second, um, uh, uh, Corinthians four and eight says we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Right. So although we go through things, it ain't to our destruction. No, it's to our betterment. It's so that we can uh, be improved. Right. Once again, reiterating the point, this is just a purifying process that we're going in, that we're going through. Right. Ain't, 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 you know, to the point that we will be destroyed. Right. That's not the reason why we go through these things. Right. So second Ezra seven and six is there is also another thing, 
a city is builded and set upon the broad field, which is a precept on the on the, on the um, uh, scripture that I just had. Right, it says there is also another thing: a city is builded and set upon a broad field, and is full of all good things. Right, it says, and that's once again the kingdom of Israel. You read, um, what was it Revelation the twenty first chapter, Revelation twenty first chapter, I believe, was describing Jerusalem. Right, but how it's going to be all decked out. Right, and then on the fourth verse. Speaking about how for, for Israel, there ain't gonna be no death, there ain't gonna be no crying, it ain't gonna be no this, right? It's just gonna be a, a beautiful kingdom, right? As it says here, it says a city is built and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things, right? The entrance thereof is narrow, right? And it's set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if it were on a fire on the right hand and on the left hand deep water, right? So it's like. It's there, you can get it, but look man, to get it, you're going to have to tread carefully, right? And if you fall, you fall into destruction, right? That's the fire on one hand and the water on the left, right? So you either go and burn or you go and drown, or you can make it, right? And that's when, when, when we do what we're doing, we're doing it in the hope that we can make it, right? So verse 8 says, and one only path between them both. Even between the fire and the water, so small that there could be one man go there at once, right? Which makes you think of uh, Philippians two twelve. Uh, work out your own salvation, right? Because yeah, you, you know we've got the brotherhood and whatever what have you, but ultimately, this journey is a journey for yourself, right? This is so small that there could but one man go there at once. If the city now were given unto a man for an inheritance. If he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? Right, basically saying if you want it, you're going to have to, you know, go through the perils. You're going to have to go through the danger. You're going to have to go through some stuff, right? So I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion, right? It's Second Corinthians four seventeen, just further down in Second Corinthians four that we read earlier. I just wanted to get that as a preset midway, where it says, "For our light affliction, which is but for a moment." Right? And you know, earlier on, I made the statement, you know, although it seems like a, you know, it seemed like what I was saying was a contradiction. It's not, right? For this very reason, right? It says, "For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory," right? So yeah, we go through some stuff, but at the end of the day, it's nothing to be, you know, compared to, uh, um, you know, in contrast to the things that are to come, right? It says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, and what does that make you think of? Right, Hebrews the 11th chapter, right, uh, uh, where it speaks about, you know, faith, right, faith is evidence of things not seen. Right, it says, while we look not at these things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Right? You know, it's Revelation 2.26, right? And it says, he that overcometh, right? Overcomes what? All the trials and tribulations that you're going to go through in this truth. Right? I, 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 I says, and keepeth my works unto the end. To him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Right, so this is the reward. Right, this is the reward for, for keeping and being faithful. Right, the Lord himself go and, you know, look after you, take care of you. Right? And then he's going to give you power over the nations. Right? You shall be joined heirs, as is uh, spoken of in the scriptures, right? So I missed what I say, shall look after, you know, that's not the, just, yeah, my, my mind is somewhere else, there's stuff going on in this, yeah, in this house, it kind of distracted me, so it's a lot, let me read that again, it's in Revelation 2.26, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, right, so you're going to get power over the nations, man. Right, you're going to be um, a, 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 a rulers, right? Yeah, Yahweh Shai has been given power of all the earth, right? But he, um, what do you call it, he, uh, 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 he is joint heirs with, or rather we are joint heirs with him, right? 
it's an isha vod in the vod of ayin as a vessels of a potisha they be broken to shivers even as I received of my father so we're going to have you know have these heathen nations in subjection right which is which, you know which is a beautiful thing right so you know when you compare and contrast it to the things that we're going through at the moment it's like is that it <laughs> right ruling forever eternity right and the greatest prize of them all right you know the 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 greatest reward second Ezra 245 he answered and said unto me these be they that put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of the most high now are they crowned and received palms right and then you you uh when you read into this you start a bit further up you find out this is this is yahweh shai <laughs> right yahweh shai is crowning you right for doing this work right which is the ultimate prize Right, he says, um, then said I unto the angel, What young man, what young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, It is the son of the Most High, whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. Right, and that word stiffly there is important because it makes you, you know, really consider that. You're going to have to go through things. You don't stand stiffly if if there's nothing hard coming up against you. There's no need. Right? So I believe that's all I got. Yeah, that's all I got. So, um, yeah, as always, Lord's Lord, that was edifying. And until the next time I say, Shalom.